Hello, sweet souls. This is DTO in the flow. And today I get to interview Yogi Brian. He is the co-host of the Yogi Show podcast, which all began because he was on his Instagram page and he was actually making fun of yoga. And so because he was in a yoga class and he just recognized that, hey, it's just yoga. That's pretty much his premise. He'll, he'll explain further. And how he got into yoga was there was a DVD by Rodney Yee that he got into. And it was 20 minutes, super fast, super easy. And he started to practice in the morning for two months regularly. And then he recognized huge improvements in his flexibility and his anxiety. And then later he got into Kundalini um, and it wasn't much regular practice. And then from there, he started to uh, discover further about what yoga can bring to his life. And there was a yoga challenge on Instagram um, and then he got into practicing in a studio. And um, so what's interesting about um, the transformation of yoga is um, once you're in this space, and Yogi Brian will explain later, it really starts to expand and starts to bring you into this whole other um, connection with yourself and others. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Yogi Brian. Hey, Dave, DTO Music. I'm so happy to be on your show, and thank you. Thank you. Great, great intro. Thank you. Yes. Um, there's so many wonderful details within your bio that, you know, I figured it's just going to come out in our interview today. So let's yeah. start off with uh, question number one. So tell us about your yoga journey and why is it important to you? Gosh, my yoga journey is so important to me. And why is because I never expected to start a yoga practice. You know, I'm a, I'm a dude and like, I like, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm going to go get a practice in, like I'm going to work out, like I'm going to lift heavy weights. Yep. And I, I just wanted to create an Instagram to make fun of yoga. And <laughs> as I started doing the Instagram and doing challenges, I had to learn yoga. So then I went to a studio and developed a regular practice. And then it took me down the ra rabbit hole of like really <laughs> like getting into the pose, like getting into the breath. And like, I realized like, like I realized this is my medicine. Like this is what mm. I've like been missing all my life. And it's really taken me down the rabbit hole. And now I'm like meditating every morning, 20 minutes in the morning mm. and That's teaching amazing, yoga. Probably. And it's, I met my wife at the yoga studio, which how crazy is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's amazing. But, wow. Yeah. It's, it's very important to me. Yoga is very important to me. And like, that's my mission now in life. Like my mission is to share the practice of yoga and meditation to the world so they can mm -hmm. develop a healthy body and a peaceful mind. Mm. Like that, that's what, you know, like that is what I'm all about. It's like, it's helped me out so much. And there's so many people out there that are struggling that, you know, put on a, put on a face, put on a mask and you think that they're doing okay. But like deep down inside, like we don't know how people are feeling. And like, that's my purpose is to like share laughter with people like through my social yeah. media and through videos, but also like give them a touch of yoga, give them a touch of you know, meditation and maybe affect, maybe it's going to affect that core of them deep down inside. That's fantastic. I love that journey that you're sharing because it's, you know, all the twists and turns. And as you said, you, you tempted something, you stopped and you got back in. And then all of a sudden now it's like, as you said, you met your wife and it's just like, obviously all these roads were leading you to Gosh, um, yeah. Ohm. <laughs> there's no place right. like Ohm, right? <laughs> yeah. There's no place like Ohm. Yeah. It was all leading me there. And I didn't realize. So when I first started dabbling with yoga, I was like just having physical like problems. Like I had planner's foot. I, I weighed at the time like 236 pounds, just not healthy. And like, I just needed to do something different. And that's why I, I was going through like physical therapy for my planner's foot. And they said it was like the Achilles heel. And it's like, there's, there's so many important things in your foot and your foot muscle that that's why you need yeah. to stretch and, and take movement. So yeah. yoga was like something where the Rodney Yee AM video, like I could literally wake up and then roll, roll on the floor 
and <laughs> do yoga on the floor, like on my back. I didn't have to do like much of working out or much of like, it didn't feel like physical activity. And that 20 minute video, I did it for a couple months and it was powerful. Like my body started feeling better. My anxiety was going away. I felt more clear and I felt like I had more time, you know, because I, I get that a lot where I just, people say like, I don't have time to do yoga. Well, yeah. it's like, well, if you do yoga, it's going to create space that you're going to have a lot more time. So that's what I've like dabbled with. Like that Rodney Yi AM video is like, I found like it, it, it just teased me with like how much space and how much like therapy, like it could provide to me. And wow. I, I didn't, I didn't stick to it. I, I got sidetracked and, and then eventually like did Kundalini yoga and Kundalini yeah. was like powerful. Like it was like, boom, like I, I felt <laughs> on a yoga high. Yeah, you're doing all these moves. You're just exactly, like, doing all the moves. You're feeling the breath, like you're feeling. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like it just like pumps the arteries. It's like the engine, the motor. You're just like, all right, it's I'm alive, I'm awake, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, and Moving I, I love the mantra work too. Like you know the music mm -hmm. and the sound to it. So yeah, it started there. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, let's go to question number two. Sure. So what inspired you after being? Um, you know, activated or let's call it like have that aha moment, like, wow, the power of yoga and you get to see these results. And, you know, as you said, like you get to heal your body and feel like you're creating time and space in your life. So what then inspired you to teach? Yeah. So great question. What inspired me to teach was, so I create this Instagram to make fun of yoga. And then I was asked to do a yoga challenge because my page was getting popular. I think I had like 2000 followers within a month or a couple nice. of weeks. I can't remember. <laughs> and like, so I have to do a yoga challenge, but I'm just making fun of yoga. Like I'm making up my own asanas, my own poses. Mm. And then I need to like figure out how to do a challenge, like a 10 day challenge for a company. So I reached out to a yoga instructor to help me actually develop each pose each day and then i'll just follow what she did and i'll make you know, the funny captions and the funny you know commentary after we did that challenge it was a fun challenge it was successful i decided like i need to go to a studio and actually learn yoga so i know how to make fun of yoga more you know i wasn't i wasn't intending to like be a teacher at all so i go to the yoga studio and after two weeks of practicing at this yoga studio i signed up for teacher training like I signed up paid in full, signed up for teacher training. And it, it's like That's they break awful. it down to three modules. Like the first module, it's like you have to just go to class like for like 90 days and like journal about it. And then, um, yeah, as I was doing the teacher training, I was like naturally threw into the mix of actually teaching. Uh, my, you know, the studio owner, I was at one of their events, like kind of middle of training, almost end of my training actually. And I, I let the studio owner say that I can volunteer for their big like rooftop event. Like I'll volunteer, like I'll check people in. And she's like, how about you teach the first part of it? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I probably <laughs> peed my pants a little bit at the time. Like, cause it was just like, it was a hundred, hundred plus people at this rooftop uh, yoga event. And that's my first time I would ever be teaching. So mm. I was thrown into the mix. I, I taught it. It went well. Like I didn't pee myself. Like, cause I, I was really like worried about that. I was, I was nervous and I'm like, I don't want to like embarrass myself <laughs> anyways. Like it went well and it was just a natural progression. Like as I was in teacher training, like uh, one of the teachers um, was sick. So I was thrown in to teach a yin class. I was thrown in to teach. So it was like the universe like took me down the yoga path. Like I wasn't intending to ever be a yoga teacher. And now teaching yoga is like such an amazing practice of my own yoga practice sharing and then just sharing, holding that space, like sh using the music and to lead, you know, people through like a guided meditation, a guided dance. Mm. So I love it. I love it. That's my teaching journey. Mm. That's amazing. So now that you teach, uh, my next question is what makes your classes unique? What makes my classes unique is I try so hard to not have my own ego in my agenda. That is my main thing they drilled into me in teacher training is you're holding space for the students. Like it's not about you, Brian. It's not about how your day was or if you're having a good day or a bad day or like what you want to work on. It's about the students. Like you're holding the space for the students to come 
and heal themselves and to come work on themselves. So I feel like my, my classes are unique because like I work so hard to like get in that space and to like have the room for the students. Mm. I you love know, that. Yeah, you're creating that container. Yeah, I'm getting a little emotional about it because it's a, uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's such a, I would say it's such a struggle to not bring ego in there. You know, as a person, especially as a yoga teacher, like, you know, it's not about me. It's about the students. It's about them. Like, how can I, if, how can I speak to them? But yeah, mm -hmm. that's, mm. I feel that's how, what m makes my classes unique. That's fantastic. Yeah. And you mentioned moments ago about music. So question four is how does music inspire you? Uh, I, I, music inspires me so much. I am an introvert. So I, I need like alone time and I need time to like process things. And like music helps me do that. And a lot of, a lot of like house techno music really gets me in the zone, like, mm -hmm. and, and gets me in the zone of like, um, sometimes, you know, I, I teach power yoga, you know, vinyasa flows. So, you know, I like using that, you know, with a, like with the fast, like flow it out. But in terms of music for my classes, I share like all my playlists like any playlist that I have, like I share it on Spotify and like, I want to share the music that I find because I spend so much time finding music that is unique for the students. You know, I, I throw in some popular music, you know, in there, but like, I, I really want them to have, um, you know, like their own experience. You know, I, I was in a class one time and like a familiar song came up and it just took me like to those emotions. And I was like, I, I didn't, I didn't really want to feel those emotions at the time. Like I was just in a yoga class. So I just love like your music actually I have breathe on my playlist. I didn't even know until, uh, you know, <laughs> after we connected that I have your music on the playlist as well, just because it's, it's, it's that connection music. Like you can really feel the energy, you know, you DJ Taz Rashid soul rising, you know, mm all of you in that conscious music movement just really helps my classes and it helps my personal introversion, you know, to go and like kind of sit back and meditate and listen to that and kind of figure my life out, figure myself out. Definitely. Yeah. And as I, I share with you that I'm a part of Buddha music group. I'm the artist and marketing director and our intention is raising the vibrations of the planet through art and music and myself and kiyoshi and amazing talent tamara she's all a part of this and she's an instructor kiyoshi and i are both yoga instructors and as you said it's like creating that container holding that space and then when you're bringing the healing and the benefiting emotives that through like music all of a sudden you're like wow what's evoking within me i didn't even know this was here but i'm like as you said in a powerful maybe you have people going to their optimal levels where if the music wasn't there, maybe that level of inspiration couldn't have happened. So it's that alchemy, right? It's that 100%. synergy. Yeah. Alchemy, it. symmetry, and just like even playing with different brain wave states in my own practice and in my own classes, you know, you know, starting it out and like getting them in that meditative state because, you know, yoga is a meditative dance. It's a meditative dance for that 60 to 90 minutes, however long your class is. And that music really helps, you know, to get you there, you know, to kind of go in that flow state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's, I think, the ability for us to really be present and yes. have that ability to feel like we're all a part of who we're becoming and it's not about where we were necessarily or always where we're at right now it's like who are we becoming and when you're in these moments especially collectively on the mat with fellow yogis it's like wow we're in this together and so mm -hmm. i can't next time i'm in phoenix i'm going to come to one of your classes awesome <laughs> amazing amazing we'll, we'll do a collab i'll play some music oh that'd be <laughs> i'd be loving that so much Totally. Yeah, it's super exciting. So let's um, go into, um, I want to hear about your show that you have been doing. And I know you have a partner that you co-host with. So let's yes. um, share with everyone. Uh, this is your website. Anyone who wants to go to yogibrian.com. So let's jump into the Yogi Show. So share with everyone listening right now what you and Pedro are up to. So Pedro and myself created the Yogi Show, and we're it's all about mindfulness, gratitude with a touch of humor. Like we want to just 
like have a show out there that is fun that talks about yoga that has guests you know that that are you know great yoga teachers great thought leaders and we started this show on instagram live a mm. while ago i think it was like a year and a half ago maybe like we started on instagram live like we we would go on like every tuesday and him and i would just chat about different topics and then one day we're like we just need to have a podcast and and we just started the podcast and we never knew how hard a podcast would be like him, him and I have like put so much time. It's, it, it is a, like such a rewarding thing though. Like we put so much time and energy in it, but like the guests that we've had on it is amazing. And the, the insight that they share, like have truly helped so many people like that's really like what keeps us going is the direct messages, the emails that we get from, you know, aspiring yoga teachers, people that are just starting a yoga practice, like letting us know like, Hey, was something that was said on the podcast or something that a guest said, like truly changed their life. So, you know, we, we just wanted to create a show to talk about yoga, talk about meditation and to talk with some amazing guests. And we're going to have to get you on Dave. Yeah, I'd love you that. On. Well, yeah, absolutely. I'd, that'd be an honor, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Let's do it. So I'm going to show some of the episodes. Um, Sean Korn. You have a um, variety of people. Yeah, Sadie Nardini. We got Coop Blackson, Catherine Budig, cool. Soul Rising there, Kino yeah. McGregor, Brian oh, Kino. Kino's nice. awesome. She's fun. Totally. I know oh, Kino. Actually, so. I, I'm really good friends with the uh, videographer. Agatha that does a lot of the video and photo content for Kino. So I met Kino when we were in South Beach. Oh, uh, cool. I was with my friend Agatha. We were roommates back in like 2013 when I was uh, beginning to uh, work on my five year project, which is my debut album, Nameless Energy. So that's when my music got out there and it's like uh, awesome. To so the universe people. right there. See? Right. Perfect. So here's a quick example I'd like to share. I don't need a script. <laughs> Um, but this is 30 years of practice. Mm, yeah. Cut to, right, so you, I'm now on Korn. stage Let's uh, going in down. front of about four. And here's some other interviews. I love the cartoon style. Oh yeah. That's our artist. Music. Her name's Melanie. Get at, get it home on Instagram. She's Hello, an amazing welcome artist. To the Yogi show. My name is Yogi Brian. I'm a co- Oh, nice. Awesome. Mm -hmm. True to yourself. And then so that's Pedro. That to, like that's your Pedro. community and like, and then we have yeah and it's funny you I get a rocking lot of it and then there's your guests i feel like yeah. people wonderful I expect people fantastic and so people can also listen it's on a variety of platforms i'm imagining yeah all the platforms that have podcasts spotify apple music stitcher uh, yep you can listen to it there okay perfect that's great so when you hit go to listen it goes right open oh here you go you got your spotify episode right. yeah that's that's the gratitude actually gratitude postcard challenge what we're doing on the show and th that's great that you clicked on that i wasn't planning on talking about it but so the gratitude postcard challenge i did that last november on my my page which which i have to stop using that page um march 1st but i'm, I'm transferring everything over but on my on on my namaste F page I'm transferring that over, but I hit 50,000 followers and I did a gratitude postcard challenge where I just ask people to send a postcard from wherever they're from to write three things that they're grateful for. And I couldn't believe it. I got like 40 or something postcards all over the world, like from um, China, like Australia, I, countries I can't even pronounce. And it was just amazing to see that. And then I got my son involved, like opening them up and, and reading the gratitude list. So this year for the show, we're actually doing it every single month so we're going to pick a winner out of a out of a, a box and we're going to pick a postcard and they'll win some yogi show merch so yeah if you're out there send a postcard three things you're grateful for to the yogi show oh that's awesome yeah and if but most people that are watching right now already follow me on spotify so awesome. you're already if you're already in that ecosystem of spotify then all you have to do is search uh, the yogi show or just type in yogi brian so from here, as you mentioned, so of course, you know, here's my Spotify right here. And this is the song Breath yes. that you play in your classes. I'll give a little snippet of that for anyone. I love it. And so you build out multiple playlists, right? 
Yes. So what people can do then is if they just go to Spotify, type in Yogi Brian, then here's your flows right here. Here's some playlists, right? Oh uh, yeah, that's um yeah yeah that's one of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then you have a lot of content right here that people can go to. So just yeah, log on. Anyone that is a Spotify user, and I mention Spotify often because, as you and I know, a lot of yogis create playlists on that platform, and you know for them to recognize that hey when you're driving to yoga away from yoga you can of course listen to music but why not stream a podcast that's specific yes. to the practice the lifestyle the global community of all of us that, that love to connect and as you've experienced transformation i've experienced transformation i happen to be a musician that got so like blown away by the possibilities of having my heart cracked open and my mind blown that it was like all right i'm going to create an album for yoga now i'm like a trilogy of albums i'm yes. creating singles i get to tour and go to different places and i love the fact that you recognize the musicians and i know that you're connected with uh dj taz rashid and i mentioned to you mm -hmm. uh, we worked on a remix together and so That's there's so, so cool. many connections it's really amazing how where you know you're led towards something and you know admittedly Sometimes I'm stubborn in life, even though I kind of get that energetic tap on my shoulder or I get that little ping in my mind. I'm like, oh, maybe I need to do this or that. Eventually, it just starts to, you get more and more notifications, so to speak. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, well, why was I called to create these memes? Oh, maybe I want to become a yoga teacher, right? right. So <laughs> it's pretty interesting. I think it was uh, Steve Jobs that says, you can't always um, understand how all the dots are add up and you, all the pieces connect over time. But once you, get through different ages and eras and chapters of your life you're like oh yeah maybe i got into yoga as you in your situation to meet my wife <laughs> that's right? huge <laughs> yeah yeah you just never know and that's one of the things that I've, I've learned with you know setting an intention or manifestation is like yeah you set that intention and you feel it in your heart but you don't know mm -hmm. how it's going to manifest like you don't know how that's going to come to you in the universe you know like right. your plans are not as huge as the universe's plans. So if you got something out there, you know, fill it in your heart, see it, meditate on it. And it's going to, it's going to come for you. Just like, just like this show here, you know, I'm listening to your songs. And then, then after talking with you, like you said, you have a chakra, like chakra songs, like I'm loving chakra lately. So mm, man, we need to, that's amazing. I, well, any listen all those. And when you met your meditation, is this a proper pose for people to go? <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Yep, that's, that's what you got to do. I love dinosaurs. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's so awesome. good. And so a lot of your Instagram, I want to showcase this for anyone that's watching to add you. As you said, you really, <laughs> okay, you're definitely a dinosaur lover. Oh, you're reading the Bhagavad Gita. You got, you got to, we got to read the Gita. You know, yeah, you got. T Rex reads the Gita. Of course, yeah, that's. Uh, he, he was attempting to, um, you know, not become extinct, and but now he has eternal life and total consciousness. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's awesome. Oh, great. So, yeah, and so, do you have some of those original me uh, memes that you started to? post is it on this page or it's, was it's that on, more it's on my other page yeah it's on my other page but i'm bringing those back i'm, I'm gonna bring like the original memes i actually started so when i started my my bigger page um which i'm transitioning over i started just like doing poses to make fun of yoga and then i actually won a meme contest on yogi memes page who's pedro oh, who's my oh. co-host and, and i didn't even really know him like before <laughs> but i won a meme contest on his page and after winning that meme contest, I had been making memes here and there, like throwing them out, but nothing like serious. But once I won his meme contest, I was like, I think I could make write memes consistently. And then it just started. Like I kept I, my, my whole page turned into a meme page. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I want to showcase this awesome picture. Uh, that's wonderful. And I saw a picture of your son. So let's talk about kids and this new generation. Sure. and yoga as a possibility because i was teaching at a high school and they had a whole program within their physical education program so it's pretty awesome how kids are just jumping into practicing is your son practice he does i take him with me to as many classes that they'll let me 
take them to. When I did my teacher training, the studio was really cool that I could bring them there. And like the, there was um, other kids that he could play with, but I, I bring him to like regular vinyasa classes. Like he just went to a couple of Kundalini classes with me this week. He, he actually loves Kundalini and he does mm. the chanting and everything. So I bring him and like we do yoga at home and like we go to events and I just hope like it really helps him in the future. You know, I, that, that's, that's my thing is like, I wish I had yoga when I was younger to deal with you know, some of the stresses, anxiety, like I wish I had some of the tools and the breath work that you just mm -hmm. find in yoga. I wish I had that throughout my life because, you know, everybody's got tough times, especially growing up. And like yoga is such a good tool, you know, to come back to when you're when you're having those lows or when you got to come down from the highs, you know. So yeah. I, I just hope, you know, I and, and I tell that to everyone, like share your practice with your kids because kids are natural yogis. And like, Absolutely. you don't know how much they're like listening and need it in the future. So share it with your kids. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like when you and I were growing up, we didn't know about yoga. And now you and I as Westerners, this Eastern wisdom and the philosophies and the lifestyle and the practice that can really dive into our souls truly. Yes. And as you and I both know, it's an inside job right? It always has been, always will be. Because oh, yeah. everything we have is right here, right now. Right here, Peace, right here. Present, right? And when you can just be clear that that's where it's at. Because a lot of times we're thinking it's the material world it's, world, it's the outside, it's this or that that's controlling things. It's like, wait a minute. Like when I, as you mentioned earlier, the flow state, which maybe certain people, because I'm from the Midwest, um, maybe not have heard of the flow state, but there's like a whole concept that people are speaking into around how when you have those days when by the time you put your head on the pillow at night, you're like, wow, that was just amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like life, <laughs> like holy cow. And you had this conversation and this happened and mm -hmm. you had this intuition and this conversation and this opportunity possibly, or maybe from a creative standpoint you're like how did i come up with this song or how did i come up with this pose or how did i really reach that person on the mat that i'm teaching today where then it landed mm -hmm. for them and they felt touch moved and inspired so that's really what i feel the power of this global yoga community is all about is how we can integrate this um, healing practice into yes. our lives and then pay it forward amen amen <laughs> Wonderful. So you have any closing words to say for anyone out there that, um, and my last question, of course, is how you can find you online, which we've kind of gone through. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, anybody out there listening, definitely got to listen to DTO music. Let, let, let's just go. Let's just say that. Listen to DTO music if you need to you. add it to your playlist. But, you know, if you're starting a yoga journey or if you are you know, like nervous to go to a yoga studio. Like you don't have to go to a yoga studio. You can go on YouTube or you can just find a DVD. Does, no one watches DVDs anymore, but you can like stream like a 20 minute video and just start like somewhere. Maybe yep. just do one asana, one pose. Or if like yoga is not your thing and meditation is your thing and you want to really try meditation, like start small and, and give it some time. Anything you do is going to take like 60 to 90 days for your body to like get in the groove and actually like it. So start small. If you meditate, try two minutes to five minutes a day or try one asana or just 10 minutes of yoga a day, maybe at home and just start and just get, gain some momentum, gain some momentum out there. Mm. That, that's, that's my closing gain momentum, everybody out there and listen to DTL music. Thank you. Yeah. Life is momentum, right? You're in that flow. Practice, practice, practice. All is coming. Yeah, exactly. Practice, practice, <laughs> practice. All is coming for sure. Love, I love awesome. that. Uh, yeah. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate you being here and all the light that you're spreading in the world and oh, you being an amazing uh, father, amazing husband, amazing leader in your community in Phoenix and globally having this uh, podcast that really gets to go out there. As you said, like you get yes. messages from people all over the world and that's really powerful for us to share and yeah, you know, 100%, pay it forward. Yes. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. Always, totally. always. Awesome. Many blessings, brother. Thank you so much, Dave. You have a great, great one. Thanks. Thanks for letting me be on the show. You're welcome.